Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm glad you've joined us this week. Monty Christ is here with me. He's the general manager from Professionals Choice. We're going to talk about bits and bidding. We're going to go from the snaffle all the way through to a finished bit and what your horse should look like, how to use them, what they should be. It's a four-part series that's going to be a ton of fun. That's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind and Climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride that cannot be denied You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse I'm Gonna take a ride on one true horse Professionals Choice is the leader in innovative equine protective equipment. You know, there are three things that I really like about my Vantech neoprene cinch by Professionals Choice. First of all, I have that easy to clean neoprene surface. Secondly, I've got that ventilated waffle pattern that allows my horse's belly to breathe. Last, it's actually American made. Those are the things I like about my Vantech Cinch by Professionals Choice. Professionals Choice, the most scientifically researched and thoroughly tested equine products in the world. The first bit we're going to talk about is a full cheek snaffle bit. Monty's got one in his hand. When I, when I get on a young horse or an older horse that's a problem horse, Monty, I like to be able to get a hold of their face a little bit okay. without scaring them in their mouth. So the full cheek works much like the halter. When I pick up on this rein and I pull over here, that full cheek hugs the side of his face. Okay, so it's putting some pressure on the outside exactly. along with the, on, on the side of his mouth. Exactly. So okay. you've, got, you've got pressure on his, the corner of his lip and his tongue on the inside where the rein is, and that, yet you've got that full cheek hugging the side of his face. And I get a lot of people ask me, you know, full cheek is meant to have a keeper and to actually ride straight up and down like this as okay. an English bridle. Okay, so we redesigned this and we put a Western spin to it because it s serves a specific purpose. So okay. I get a lot of people ask me, why don't you put it in the keeper? I don't want it in the keeper. I want it to do its job much like the halter. So if I've got a big old horse that's just wanting to jerk on me, I can get a hold of his nose just like you would with a halter and lead rope. So my groundwork conveys right into the bridle. Okay. And everything becomes one solid piece and flows all the way through. Okay. So a snaffle bit, you know, is a, it's a one-to-one -one ratio bridle. So and, and what do you mean by one-to-one? -one? There's no leverage. Okay. okay. Your a snaffle is any mouthpiece as long as the head stall and the rein connect to the same ring. So you can see I've got my head stall and, and my slobber strut connected to the same ring. There's no leverage. So if I add a half a pound, he feels half a pound on his tongue, maybe on the corners on the bars of his mouth a little bit. Okay. But that's it. If I add 10 pounds, he feels 10 pounds. There's no pull pressure. There's no curb pressure. You can put a curb strap on a snaffle, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay. But it's of no value as far as leverage. It's not going to do anything other than keep the bit from slipping through the horse's mouth. Okay. So the full cheek with the with the cheek piece there, re, you don't really need the curb strap because right. what's going to happen when you pick up on that rein, you're not going to pull that through his mouth. With the mm. the, the sides with the okay. full cheek there. Now, occasionally, rarely, you'll get a horse who gapes his mouth really wide and he'll gag the bit and slip it through. That's, that's one of those horses, you don't see it much in colts, you see it a lot in 10, 12, 15 year old sour, rotten horses that have learned to lean on the bridle and just get away with murder. And they'll slip that bit through, in which case you may have to go back and use a bit hobble okay. to, to keep it from slipping through. But really, for me, I, I see the snaffle bit as the easiest way to communicate to the horse in a basic, simple matter. All right. So you've got, like you, you've got that bit held in your hand. Okay. If I move, like right now, if you just take it and I, I pick up on this rein, there's a little movement over here on this side, but really I'm gonna to touch one side of that horse's mouth. So you have independent pressure you on it. You got independent pressure. Okay. All he's gotta do is figure out how to get rid of one thing. That's what your horse wants. He wants a total release. So it, you're trying to get him to come to a cue 
okay, and respond to a cue, he's trying to get rid of the cue. That's his goal. Your goal is have the cue be successful. His is get rid of the cue, and they're the same goal. As soon as he figures out how to get rid of the goal, the cue rather, you're going to release him, and he's going to start becoming trained. If I have 10 different things going on on his head, he's got to try to figure out all of those at once. So when you were referring to the pull pressure, mm -hmm. the curb pressure, okay. Yeah, right, and you know, maybe a, a tie down and a, you know, a brain chain or a million different things. All of a sudden, he's got all this stuff going on. With a snaffle, he's got one thing. When so, he gets the answer right, we release it. One plus one makes two, he starts to get it. Okay. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, yes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna step up on him here and uh, just show you a little bit of how I use this, how I use this bit. Okay. And if you've got something you wanna kick in there. I will do that. Fire right away. Okay. And how old is this horse? This horse is a five-year-old. Okay. Raised here on the ranch? No, uh, we've had him here for about two and a half years. Okay. Bought him as a uh, as a three-year-old, and um, he's coming along. He's a long ways from finished. He's got some things we're going to work on. Okay. But he's a good horse. What I like to do, I like to, as I said, keep a singleness of purpose in mind. So I'm just going to pick up on that rein and ask this horse to give me his nose, and you can watch the action of that snaffle right there. And you can see that outside cheek coming around. And all I need is to set my horse's head elevation, gain control. Basically, in, in my opinion, everything we do horseback pertains to one of two things, either stop or turn. Okay. If we're talking about a flying lead change, we stop going right, we start going left. Okay. It's a stop and a turn. Slide and stop, that's obvious. Spin, it's a turn, okay? So I focus that way. And if I want my horse's head elevation, I like my horse to carry himself kind of at withers or slightly above, uh, within a half an inch to an inch of the wither either way, up or down. I really don't care, but that, that area, I don't like him to get too low with his ears, but that's determined right here with my hand. And so when I go to the snaffle, it makes it pretty easy. Now, I'm gonna be a touch rude to Tex here, because I wanna show you what that full cheek will do. I never jerk on a horse's mouth, but I'll take a hold of the pressure and I'll pull it clear through if I have to. And that's where that full cheek really comes into, pre into play. So it's putting some pressure on the it's outside. It's putting some pressure on the outside. That Again, I wouldn't do that on a two-year-old very often. On a two-year-old, I'm gonna sit here with my hand like this and wait on him. But when you get on that old horse that wants to just throw his head into the bit and run off through his shoulder, you know, you get that horse that's walking off like this and he just won't respond or he's running off like this, I'll take that rein and just drag his nose through his tail like that. To pull him around. Right, and so, you know, a lot of times I'll get the question, why don't you go to a leverage bit for that? Well, I use leverage bits for things, but when I'm working on that, what I have is a, a failure for the horse to follow his nose, and I want to simplify it. If I pick up on a leverage bit, again, I kind of grab him all the way through his jaw up to his pole. Okay. What I want to do is just say, hey, this is simple. You need to go from right to left. You need to, you need to get busy following your nose. And so that's what makes the full cheek bit work for me so well in colt starting and in problem solving. And well, lots of people don't start a lot of colts in their life. If you're gonna start one or two, you might as well have the equipment that it takes to do it and, and be safe and give you the upper hand, uh, but lots of us deal with retraining the horse we bought that we thought was really good, but Going turns out- Going back to the basics. Yeah, and, and to me, that's it. If, I'm, if I have a really good horse, like this horse here is coming along really good. Last summer, he got a little bit spooked on a, on a really hard day. And so for a couple of days after that, we had to go back to the basics. When I go back to the basics, I want to do that with a snaffle. And I want to do it most of the time to start with, with a full cheek. To build their confidence back up. Yeah, get that, get that taken care of. And so, you know, one of the questions that, that we get asked a lot is, do you start your colts in their first ride in a halter or in a snaffle bet? Well, to me, if you start them in a halter, you've got to come back and start them in a snaffle. So you're doing double duty. If you start him in this full cheek. You get the best of both worlds. Exactly. That, that's exactly what we're getting at. You start him in this full cheek, and all of a sudden, you've got the best of both worlds. You've got the halter pressure there, and you've got the pressure inside his mouth like any good snaffle bit will do. 
All right, so then once I get my horse really responding vertically, or laterally rather, once he's responding laterally, the next thing I want to do is get him responding vertically. So I'm just going to take my outside hand, and again, because the snaffle is an individually, the, the action of the snaffle is individual, mm -hmm. I can take my outside hand and pull it straight back, and that encourages his outside jawbone to come back towards my hand, and the inside hand controls direction, and really quickly, on any kind of a horse, I start getting that, you know, you get again a really dull old horse, you're going to do a lot more vertical. But quickly, by having that independent action in that snaffle, I can take my hands apart and get this horse to where he actually rounds up nice uh -huh. and soft. Well, let's show, let's show the, the public what, what's happening inside that horse's mm -hmm. mouth. Let's just imagine that my, my fingers here are the tongue. Right. And, and you're going to... So I've got my inside hand here. So you're putting some pressure I've here. I've got some pressure there for the turn, and then I just bring his nose in vertical right there. Okay. So, you know, quickly it shows really easily this horse is going to come get away from that pressure. That's his job that's his goal get away from the pressure okay and what he's going to be feeling in there is independent action independent Absolutely. action yep yeah you're working both sides independently ken the next bit we've got in the line is the o-ring snaffle now i've noticed here that you've changed the way the snaffle was put together you've added a lifesaver in this um can you kind of touch with the public as far as um why we did that yeah um what happens when you take that lifesaver and put it in there? You've got a comfort fit bend to the mouthpiece. And so, so it's then when you allow put, it to. Yeah, and so when you put this in here, all of a sudden you take all of the action out of the bit and it is completely independent. With the full cheek, there's a little bind occasionally, okay. uh, which is okay, we need a little stiffer bit for what we were talking about. With the, with the lifesaver on the O-ring, it's so loose jointed that you can pick up one corner of the horse's mouth without affecting the other one at all. It slides over that ring and so since it's so soft and loose in his mouth, it gets the horse lighter and lighter and lighter. Instead of scaring him in any way, you're taking this mouthpiece and you're making it so soft and so easy and so supple that the horse just naturally starts to follow it. He starts to get soft and easy and supple himself because you're not scaring him. He's not busy getting bracy away from you. He's actually understanding the release and realizing what it's about. And it just makes it that much easier. I put it on the O-ring snaffle because I go to the O-ring I love the full cheek for what it does, okay. but then when I get away from it, when I get out in the pasture and I'm roping, I don't want my horse to hook and rope in that full cheek or hook brush in it or whatever, so I like the O-ring because it's not going to hang up on stuff. All right. Um, and then you're going to find that this mouthpiece is in several of the next bits we go on. I love this mouthpiece as I go towards bringing a horse to finish. I love to have that consistent mouthpiece all the way through. Even though the action and the cheek pieces of the bit change, the horse gets real comfortable knowing what's in his mouth. Right. Okay. So the, as the progression goes along, yeah. it's much easier. What, what's the purpose of the, uh, the copper rings at the bottom? Well, two things. One, I found this mouthpiece hanging on a bit on an old head stall in a barn. And I love the way it worked. It was an accident, and I love the way it worked. And so I just didn't want to change anything. Okay. Uh, but what the copper does is it gives the horse something to play with. Those little donuts on the lifesaver. You can tell I kind of like food. Lifesavers, right. donuts. Right. Uh, anyways, what it does is it gives him something to kind of play with, roll on his tongue, and it helps create saliva. Okay. Now the the mouthpiece is sweet iron, so it's it tastes good. It's good to suck on. I like it when they start to rust a little bit. The horse right, yeah. likes it. They are definitely going to rust yeah. as, as as it moves along. Yeah. I, and, I understand that a horse will generate between five to seven gallons of saliva a day. Yeah, that's a lot of saliva. That's a lot of saliva. When you think about that, that's like a drooling problem. That's a major drooling so, problem. That's what I want to do. I want to keep that alive because that keeps his mouth soft, warm, and comfortable. Okay. What I, what I don't want to do is just put something in there that sucks up the moisture and makes it uncomfortable. You've had cotton mouth. It's not much fun. Right. So I want my horse to be as comfortable as I can. Everything I do in training, I want it to make it as easy on him as I possibly can. So let's go ahead and put this one on. Okay. One of the things I want to do, Monty, uh, I want to talk about just bridling a horse. I got a couple of emails here a week or two ago and they asked if I would cover this and now seems like a really good time. When I bridle a horse, I like to just take my reins and you can throw them over like this. When I use a loop rein, I don't like to do this. I've seen a lot of wrecks like that. That's exactly right. That horse gets away from you and now this is dangling around his back foot and you tear up tack and you scare the horse. Or you try to hang on and... Or you get drug around. And the next so stop's the hospital. doing this, 
you know, or on hook the rein on the slobber strap, that's fine. But what I really want to talk about is actually bridling the horse. I take my right hand, I come up here between the horse's ears, and I ask him just to soften his face. Right away, my left hand goes to the bridge of his nose. Now I've kind of got him haltered here, and I bring his nose down. Bring the head stall to my hand. There are three areas that cause a horse to be bad to bridle. His mouth, he's scared of something, right? Mm -hmm. His ears, he's scared of something. The third one that people don't think about at all is his eyes. And people pull this bridle up and poke him in the eyes with the brow band. So when I do this, I bring it up to my hand, I grab a hold of the bit right here, and I cup that bit between my fingers and bring it right here to his mouth. And I just hold it right there and wait on him. I'll take my thumb in the back corner of his mouth and then when he starts to work his mouth, I guide that bit between his teeth. I don't jerk it up. And you're bringing it up with your and right I hand. And I lift it with this hand. This hand guides, this hand lifts. Then I switch hands. I know this seems like a pain in the neck. It's really not. Push his ear forward. Come over here. Push his ear forward gently. Get that brow band out. Think about if somebody just walks up and smashes a hat on your head, it sort of angers it, it, you. It's, it's stressful. Yeah. So what I want to do is make it as soft and easy as I possibly can, and then I reverse it the same way when I take the bridle off. I just take my hand, slide it under the head stall, push it forward. One ear at a time. Push it forward, one ear at a time. Bring my hand down here, and I allow my horse to spit the bit. I don't jerk it out of his mouth and bang his teeth, all right? So pick it up right here, guide it through his teeth with one hand, lift with the other. Bridle him here, push that ear forward nice and gently. I like my I like my forelock out of the brow band. You can leave it under, that's your choice, but I like it out. Throat latches. I, I kind of tell my crew, look, throat latches are two things, necessary and annoying. If it's tight enough to do a good job, it's too tight. If it's loose enough to be comfortable for the horse, it almost is too loose. Almost too loose. So I like to just have it where I can kind of slide my fingers back and forth around there and have it fit him really nice. All right. Now, uh, now another question that, that, yeah. that I'm asked a lot at trade shows and things is, is how tight should the head stall be? Okay. How tight should the bit be in the horse's mouth? When I was a kid, my dad told me two wrinkles, Ken, all the time. Well, walk around like that all day. And that's pressure that you're applying on that horse's mouth that starts to get old. All right, so what I do is I like the bit to just touch the corner of the horse's mouth. That leaves the snaffle action hanging a little bit loose. Yeah, there you go. You see how, just let go of it with your fingers a little bit. Yep. Now you see it kind of hangs down like this a little bit until your horse starts sucking on it. If it's hanging loose, it'll annoy him a little bit. So he starts closing his mouth and holding it, which helps develop a closed mouthed horse. And put it in the proper position mm -hmm. in his mouth. That's right. So if you get it really tight and, and so the, the, the actual cheek pieces are part of the head stall, that never happens. And in fact, it encourages gaping. And you, incre and you, you create a callus. Exactly. Right. You're, you're wearing out pressure on your horse's mouth. Okay sensitive to the nerves. The nerves are, are basically be getting wore out. Exactly. It's like, it's, it's like somebody poking you with a pencil endlessly. At first it hurts and after a while you learn to ignore it. Right. Well, Ken, let's go ahead and have you get on and, and demonstrate some of the some of the advantages of using the, the ring snaffle. Okay. Now, snaffle, again, is a snaffle, right? I mean, there's not a huge difference in these bits, but what I start to do you notice right away when I pick up on this bridle, this horse came even quicker and softer to the bit. Because that bridle is so soft on him, and again, I've got that independent action now. If I pick up on this rein, I can move that shoulder over really nicely, right? I can bring that shoulder back really nicely. All of a sudden, I've got a lot of free movement in my horse's mouth. Now, obviously, I took the time to teach him how to respond to that. But this bit allows him to understand it better. It allows him to find the release and find the answer quicker. And that's what I like. And again, we talked about, I don't want to get my horse's bridle hung up and stuff. Right. When we go busting through the brush or up in the timber, I don't want that bit snagging on stuff or if I rope something. So that's one of the clear differences in this bit is that it's not going to hang on things. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get tangled up. And then that mouthpiece, now I've got so much more. Look at this horse, the difference. Yeah, you know, he, he carries his head completely different. Completely different. different. Yes. And, and we didn't do anything other than step on him with a new bridle, a different bridle. And all of a sudden, he's got his nose softer and just 100% more relaxed, more comfortable. When I go to a stop, I love this bit because if my horse doesn't want to stop, I like to set my hands differently. 
okay? Okay. So if I ask for a woe and my horse kind of walks through it, I hold one hand and I, I elevate the other one. With this bit, what that does is it pulls here and here. With a two-piece snaffle, you get kind of a drag effect. Kind of a here, you get a whole different uh, cue, and what happens is you get his, you get his body it kind of tweaked. Okay. You take his spine, which wants to be straight, and you twist it. Okay. Okay. And so he can't walk forward. He could, but he doesn't want he doesn't to walk want forward to. into that. It's uncomfortable. So again, having that loose jointed separated mouthpiece gives me the ability to do things like that. Well, Ken, I can't thank you enough. I, I'm, I'm, we're so excited at Professional's Choice to, to launch your new line of bits. Um, we look forward to many years to come and expanding the bit line uh, moving forward. Uh, we just launched the bits two months ago, and all the bits are available at any of the Professional's Choice retailers out there or through your website at KenMcNab.com. Yeah, you bet, Monty. It was a pleasure, and I look forward to the next couple of weeks of going through all of these bits and explaining where, why, and how we use them uh, as an educational tool. And I think you guys are going to enjoy that uh, immensely. So look forward to those, the next three parts of this four-part series coming up on Discovering the Horseman Within. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, a perfect partner built to ride. One true horse. Bond that cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one true horse Gonna take a ride on one true horse